Recently, I've decided to start working again on my biomimetic bionic hand. So when I was working on it a few years ago, at the end of that project, I wrote down every optimization I could think of, and I've thought of lots more since. So my design process this time around is going to be to start from the ground up, but use the original design as a point of reference, and work through the design piece by piece and optimize every single part. Now I just want to mention quickly, I do get a lot of emails asking for the CAD and STL files for the original design, but because I did that project as part of my degree, the university owns those files and I'm not able to distribute them. With this new design, my intention is to make everything free and open source eventually, but because I'm in such an early stage of development right now, I'm only going to post the CAD files to my Patreon page for now. So if you want early access, there's a link in the description. Otherwise, I'll be uploading everything here and on my website once I have most of the issues straightened out. So as a starting point, I've been working on a new IP joint design, so that means interphalangeal, because the individual finger segments are called phalanges. So this, in theory, is the simplest joint design in the human hand, it being a simple hinge joint. So I started first of all with a much improved cable actuation system, which uses a pulley at the joint itself. Um, so the main reason for that is that it completely removes the need for torsion springs, which are a major sort of annoying and difficult to acquire and unreliable factor in the original design. It also means that there's a consistent application of force throughout the entire range of motion. Now something to note about that is that, in a real hand, the application of force isn't actually consistent because the mechanical advantage that the tendons have on the fingers actually changes as the fingers move through their ranges of motion. So in that way, it's not actually biomimetic. So I need to be really careful and define exactly what makes a design biomimetic. So because there are no hard and fast rules, obviously, it's important for me to define what it means in my particular application. So when I say biomimetic, what I mean is biomimetic function with regards to the motion of my hand, not necessarily the underlying mechanisms which produce the motion. So while I am super interested in designs which use artificial muscles and tendons and that kind of thing, I want to design something which can be practical right now and I think that artificial muscle designs have maybe got a little bit more development to go before I would consider them practical for something like a prosthetic. So let me go further by clearly laying out my design parameters with this project. So first of all, accessibility. I want it to be low cost because um, there's plenty of examples of amazing bionic hands at a really high price point. And there's plenty of examples of simple, really practical, useful hands um, at a super low price point. I want to design something which can be built at home on a fairly low budget, maybe around the 500 pound mark. And when I say buildable at home, I mean, I want you to be able to make it with just FDM printing. Um, because I know not everyone has um, a resin printer, but a uh, regular FDM printer is really easy and cheap to get a hold of nowadays. And I'm also going to design it with no machining. So if the design goes well, hopefully it'll be the kind of thing that you can build at your desktop. I would like to leave in the potential for you to use better quality components, however. Like, there's always going to be the option to use resin printing or, you know, something even better to make even higher quality components. And there's areas where you could use machining to make, for example, like a better quality pivot rod, um, which could be made out of aluminium or brass or something like that. Um, so with this design that I'm intending to build, it's not going to be easy, like it's going to be technically difficult to assemble all these tiny little things, but it will be very cheap and accessible. So going back to my IP joint design is an example of a really cheap solution to joint feedback which I didn't have in my first design. So servos like this MG90S servos work by having a tiny circuit board take a reading from the integrated potentiometer as well as an input signal and then this circuit board powers the motor to try and make the potentiometer's angular position match the input signal via the motor and the gear train. So what I've done in this design is desoldered the original potentiometer, although I need to leave it in its place to serve as a, an axle for some of the gears. And I replaced it with one of these really slim potentiometers that are built into the finger. I also removed the stopper um, on the gears, which 
restricts the servo to 180 degrees of motion. That's there so that the servo doesn't damage its own potentiometer. But since the potentiometer as I'm using can rotate 360 degrees, there's no need to worry. And the motor can just keep spinning until it's at the exact right position, which is really handy. Um, and it means that there's no need to calibrate the servos whatsoever. Now, because my printer is FDM, and because some of these joints are very complex and need to fit precisely to different components, I've sliced up the joint into several little slices. I did this same thing with my original design for the same reasons, but on that design I screwed the parts together with M1.6 screws, which added a ton of weight to the design. In this design I have half a millimetre holes running through, so a thin wire or potentially some brass rod or something like that can be used to align all the pieces and increase the strength beyond regular layer adhesion if it was all 3D printed and they can be glued, twisted or bent to hold the shape. The wires that hold the phalanges together also clamp against the potentiometer wires and provide some strain relief, which was a big lesson that I learned when I was designing my control glove with these exact same potentiometers, is that um, tiny little soldered joints like this need some form of strain relief so that um, they don't pull off. Luckily it can be sort of built into the base design like this. Now of course wiring the phalanges together like this is a fairly, is a fairly sort of ugly solution, but of course, if you have access to a really good SLA or resin printer, then you could print all these components as just one part. It's just that with FDM printing, without using dissolvable supports, it would be really hard to get some of these hole sizes accurate enough to fit in the bearings and potentiometers and whatnot. So having everything segmented like this helps to be able to print everything as precisely as possible on less capable printers, shall we say. I designed the pulleys to be as low profile as they can possibly be, and they could potentially be even smaller than this, since it would actually be possible to use even thinner control wire. Um, but at the end effector, the wire is burned to make it thicker. On my original pulleys, I had a threaded insert and M3 screw in order to connect the wire to the phalanges, so the pulleys which sit on the servo itself, the ones that I'm using now are very petite compared to the original pulleys, only as thick as the actual servo housing itself. Originally I used again a threaded insert and M3 screw to secure the wire, but now I'm just using one M1.6 screw and it's honestly easier to adjust. So functionally I'd like the final design to resemble something like the shadow hand if you've seen that before, but obviously at a much lower cost and accessibility. And although I have a ton of respect for that design and think it's an amazing robotic hand. I'd like my design to be a little bit more organic looking um, and a little bit less angular and I'd like to build a forearm as well and try and integrate all of the actuators in a more seemingly organic way. The design process as I mentioned is going to be going through each component and joint in the hand and optimizing each part as much as possible. And the way that I'm going to document this is with these sort of in-depth videos on each individual component of the hand. Um, and hopefully you guys are going to give me some feedback um, since it's going to be open source and we can help to make it better. So thank you very much to my patrons and thanks to everyone that watched the video. Um, I'm sure some of you noticed that this video is a little bit early and that's because I'm going to try and release a video every 10 days now to try and get to a point where I can release weekly videos, which would be ideal. It's also going to work out nicely with this shorter format where I can talk about projects in progress rather than just releasing big packages of already completed projects. Hopefully this is going to mean that I can release videos a little bit quicker and they'll be a little bit more entertaining too. So I'll see you in 10 days for the next video.